Welcome to the Fin Nation podcast, where we wholeheartedly believe women entrepreneurs are leaders that rise together. Success does not have a definition. There are no secret strategies. Women entrepreneurs are rewriting history by defining success on their own terms. Hi, I'm your host, White Dogannon, the down-to-earth chick with a different name. Each week, join me for inspiring stories and powerful interviews of women entrepreneurs sharing their lessons to success to help you take your business to the next level. Now, let's go for it. Welcome back, Fem Nation. Today, I have the amazing, and I'll tell you why in a minute, Maddie Brown, who is the chief number smasher. And as most of my listeners remember, I have some background in accounting, so we're probably going to riff on some really cool things for small businesses. But I know Maddie's bringing to the table some amazing information that you really should sit down, take notes, and listen to. So thank you for coming on today, Maddie. Thank you for having me. I love to do this kind of thing. It's great fun. It is. And I'm so excited you're here with us today. So let's start with the main question of the hour. Where did your entrepreneurial journey begin? Well, I passed the CPA exam in 1981, which gives me all my gray hair. (laughs) Okay. And I started out in public accounting and I loved it, but I was a woman in a man's world in the 80s, and it was, um, wasn't was a good place to be. And I, and I went to work for the government and did training and education, and then I got into where I was doing criminal tax prosecutions for Ooh. tax fraud and tax evasion, and I hated it. I was miserable. And I kept saying to myself that when I turned 55, I was going to take early retirement from my wonderful government job, and I was going to start my own accounting firm the way I thought it should be done, which is different than most CPA. Mm -hmm. And that's partially because I'm a woman and partially because I have strong opinions about what is good for business in this country and for small businesses particularly. And so I spent a good part of the last five or six years I was there saying, as soon as I retire, as soon as I retire, as soon as I retire. And then I turned 50 and I got a tattoo and I quit my government job and I bought a small accounting firm in a town next to me. And I have spent the last 11 years developing a client base of people that I love to work with. And I love to help and see them do better in the world. And when they do better in the world, the world is a better place. And I have done my part. And so I am passionate about helping small businesses succeed and pay themselves and not run up a bunch of credit card debt and not burn up their retirement accounts. And I want to see 88% of the businesses in this country are small businesses with no employees, with less than $100,000 worth of revenue. And those people are largely ignored by the CPA profession. And they're the core of what makes America work. And they need help. And I want to be a contributing factor to them finding that help. Mm -hmm. And knowing, knowing that, that that statistic is such a powerful reflection of the economy and the businesses and what makes this country go round, what would you say the number one hurdle is outside of not being recognized or assisted or supported by the accounting, the CPA industry in large, by and large, I'm not saying everyone, but what would you say is their number one hurdle outside of that? The number one hurdle is lots of people are really good at what they do. Mm -hmm. They know coaching, they know writing, they know graphic design, they know art, but they've never had any business training. And doctors and attorneys, they haven't had any business training. 
And nobody teaches people how to be in business for themselves and how to be profitable and how to manage their money so that they have something to show for the work that they did. And I see tax returns every year that have zero interest and dividends. Mm. And they don't have any investment. They don't have any money working for them. They're not paying themselves. They're running up credit card debt and they're scared to death of the IRS. Okay. And that can all be shifted by getting a good understanding of how to manage your business from a financial standpoint. And I would much rather see people start out right and mm-hmm. develop good habits so that they can be successful. How do you catch them at the beginning of going into a business when they're kind of bootstrappy anyways, and so they're, they're re- operating lean? How do you co- catch them and convince them that there is a better way to start it? Well, you know, Google actually does a tremendous service in, in helping people, but it, it provides a, a buffet of things mm-hmm. that you can learn from. And the key is knowing what you need to learn and what you need. And, and there are hundreds and thousands of resources that you can download free on the internet. And the real thing that people need to do is they need to sit down and take it, it doesn't have to be an agonizing process, but they need to sit down and draw up how their business is going to work financially before they ever start the business. Because if they can't make it work on paper, then they're never going to make it work in real life. And that is the best information that you can get. If you can get the information that this business doesn't work, So what do I need to do differently? How do I need to do it differently so that it will work? And when you have that business plan financially in place, then you can execute and you can do everything that it takes to make that work. But the first step is really making the plan and really breaking it down and making sure that you've got a viable idea. And if you can make it work on paper, then you can make it work in real life. So, so true. And that's such a key um, reminder for so many businesses that even if they've already started their business, it's never too late to sit down and do that because they can save themselves time and probably loss of revenue by doing it, even if they've already started their business and not had done that. So I didn't, I don't want people to think that if they didn't do that from the get go, then they're doomed. They're not. You can do that any point in time. What's that saying? When's the best time to plant a tree? 10 years ago. When's the second best time? Today. You know, and it's the same thing with sitting down and putting that on paper is even if you have already started, but you're feeling, you're just feeling a disconnect from what's actually going on versus the day-to-day operations of trying to get the business off the ground. Still, it's viable to do it today. Wouldn't you agree? Oh, absolutely. I do it. I, I do it every six months. I have a process that I go through and it, it tells what I want what I want it to be. When I go to a restaurant and I order a salad, I say, I want ranch dressing. I want cheese. I want bacon. I want grilled chicken. I want blah, 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 whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And your business is no different. You order up what you want. And that may change based on events and things that happen in the world, but you need to be adaptable and you need to look at what's happening And you need to make those decisions about managing your business in the current moment. And in order to manage your business in the current moment, you have to have a history of where you've been and you have to have a plan for where you're going so that you can decide what to do today. Mm -hmm. How much does financial literacy play into this, into building a business, you know, as far as what they know and what they don't know or what they think they know and what they actually do know? You know, so many people have a very poor relationship with money Mm. and they're, they're whole, they're driven by opening up their bank account in the morning and seeing how much money is in their bank account and using that to make decisions. And that's not a good 
place to come from. And if there's, I, I kind of get on a soapbox and I preach a little bit, okay? Mm-hmm. You need financial understanding. Every business has a chief financial officer. Unfortunately, a lot of times the owner is wearing that hat and that isn't something that they know how to do. And an outside set of eyes and ears can hear and point out where there are leaks and where there are opportunities so that you can do better and be more successful. I'm a huge advocate of coaching because it makes it possible to do things faster and easier and more profitably, and you don't waste as much time and money and resources. Too many people come to me after they've spent their 401k and ran up $70,000 worth of credit cards, and then they want to know how to fix it. And it's like, it, it should have never happened in the first place. And yes, it can be fixed. It, don't, don't be confused. It can be fixed, okay? But you've got to understand your relationship with money, how you treat it, how you take care of it, and how you grow it. Because anything you focus on grows. So if you spend time focusing on managing your money, it will grow and respond. You know, they say plants grow when you talk to them, right? Okay. Right. Talk to your money. Sit down. Make a date. Say, you know, what are we doing? What are we going to do? Where do we want to be in 12 to 18 months? And how do we get there? Money's green. Money's green. (laughs) When you said that about plants, I was like, well, yes, of course. Money's green too. Uh, No, that is, that is such a good, um, good way to kind of bridge that gap on talking about financial, um, just understanding the financial picture in and of itself. And truly the, the wearing that CFO hat for a lot of small businesses, there is a, an emotional attachment to the decisions being made because naturally they have an emotional attachment to the business that they're building. So having that third party, you know, unattached vantage point, at least listening to what are they seeing? What is it showing? How is that going to benefit? You know, there's no attachment to any part of it except for seeing the growth happen. That's where that coaching aspect comes into play. That's where having those set of eyes, that's where outsourcing that CFO or having that trusted advisor or the person that understands what the data is telling you or what the data is not telling you, that's not going to be influenced, swayed by, but the heart's strings or the tug or, you know, all the things that come along in that entrepreneurial world that we are aware, well, well aware exist, you know, so big time, um, I'm a big time advocate for that coaching atmosphere as well, because it does give that part that, that aspect that they can't necessarily see, or maybe have not formed properly themselves. One of the, one of the most interesting things to me is Very few people have anyone that they talk to about money, okay? Um, Husbands and wives don't even talk to each other about money as much. It creates more stress. And I I always say, then this is probably, I I don't, you know, I'm going to say it, I think it's appropriate here. Um, I always say that going to your accountant is opening and vulnerable and you're looking at being feeling like you're being judged or shamed. And in a lot of respects, it's a lot like going to the gynecologist. Okay. You, you, you are going to be examined on a level that is very intimate. People tell me things they don't tell anybody else on the planet, because who do you open up your checkbook and say, this is what I did last week. Okay. You know, and people don't do that. They don't have that and they need it. Everybody needs it, okay? And so you can find those resources. Too many, too many of these small business owners struggle to get their information together in March and April so that they can do their taxes for next year, and they lose deductions. The single biggest way that people overpay taxes is they have poor records. They don't, they don't, have, they don't capture all of their expenses. 
$100 worth of expense is going to ju- is going to save you roughly $30 in taxes. For every $100, you're looking at roughly $30 in tax savings. If you lose those deductions, it costs you real money. And the IRS is not going to come and tell you that you left deductions on the table. No, that's not their <laughs> job. It's not their job. They process the information you give them. So if you don't, if you're not thorough and utilizing all avenues of the information that is possible, then you will pay more. And that's probably one of the highest things. And subsequently, the scariest part of for entrepreneurs is that they do end up with a tax liability. And there are many different ways that you can get an IRS tax return submitted on time, sure, on time or with an extension, but is it the right way? You know, is it the right path? It, it, and everybody's scenario has a unique ability to figure out what that path looks like for them. There are commonalities, but there are uniquenesses that are just pertinent to their business. And if they're not set up properly, then they're not even creating that unique possibility for themselves. Exactly. Um, people are afraid of the IRS. And I always say, there's one simple thing. When you get a letter from the IRS, would you know what the first thing you do is? Open it. Yep. That is exactly right. Open it and read what it says. Yeah. And I get people every week in my office that have a letter from the IRS that they haven't opened. Yeah. Oh. And, and, and they're scared of the letter. Yeah. You know? And, right. and it, it, there's so much fear and so much frustration around money. And people need to look at how they relate to money and make different choices mm-hmm. so that they can have dividends and interest on their tax return when they file their tax return, so that they can have something to show for the work that they put in throughout the year. You know, mm-hmm. they, they need those records. And the the real purpose of the records is first and foremost, so that you can manage the business and you can make decisions. Mm -hmm. Secondarily, you're going to use those records to calculate your tax liability. Okay. But the real fundamental purpose of the records is so that you can decide how to manage your business, how to do business and be successful. It's data. It's telling the story of what's transpired in what's working and what's not. And if you're never looking at that, you're winging it going forward. You can be a six-figure entrepreneur and still winging it and losing your butt, even though at the moment you think you're doing okay. And then then on the other side, you've got those that get down to the end of the year and be like, holy crap, I made that kind of money. I don't have anything in my bank account for it. Where did it go? That's right. That's the big... this This is a common question. And most people don't have the records to know where it went. Right. And it is, there there are simple, simple strategies that you can set into place. Number one, set aside money in savings for a wealth account. Number two, set aside money for taxes. Do it every month. Don't wait until March or April and then have a knee-jerk reaction. Be proactive. Set it aside every month. If you don't need everything you set aside, all right, it's time to plan a weekend vacation. Perfect. But but let's set the money aside so that we're prepared so that it doesn't bite us. Right. Because what happens if you don't, you got to pay that liability somehow and you end up robbing Peter to pay Paul. So you take the, the proceeds from the next project or the next client you have just to pay that liability. Now you're shorthanded. You're shorthanded on your rest of your bill. It's a ripple effect that that's just kind of a nasty little spot to find yourself in. Yeah, that's sound, sound, sound advice. Guys, I hope you're taking notes. Hey, Fem Nation, I know you are called to lead something great. Are you wondering what the next best step is for you? I have a next best step. I invite you to walk with me through the Become Unstoppable Challenge. Join me on a 21-day journey to discover your inner leader. Find how to build your confident leading foundation to decide and move forward to your highest potential in business and life. 
After helping dozens of challengers take hold of their leadership, you will come away from this experience with a renewed sense of confidence in order to serve those who need to hear from you. As a valued listener, I'm inviting you to save 25% on the next 21-day challenge by using code FEM2020. That's F-E-M-2020. Check it out at www.becomeunstoppablechallenge.com. Again, that's www.becomeunstoppablechallenge.com. Coupon code FEM2020. I look forward to seeing you on the inside. Maddie, I want to come back around and ask you how you define success in your entrepreneurial venture itself. What does that look like for you? I define success. I've got an affirmation that I started using in 2009. And it is true for me today. And it wasn't true for me in 2009, but I made it true. And that is that I love what I do and it makes a difference in people's lives. Mm. And if I can live by that statement and I can feel that way about the people that I work with and I can make a difference in their lives, then that's, that's what feeds me. That's your success. Yeah. Money is nice. You know, money yeah, sure. is nice, but it isn't the most important thing. It touches everything. It isn't the most important thing, but it touches right. everything. And you've got to understand it and you've got to work with it, but it shouldn't own you. Yeah, precisely. How has the entrepreneurial journey changed you as a person, do you think, once you finally moved into this avenue? I really feel very mission driven to help the 88% of the businesses making less than $100,000 a year make more and be financially free. I think every person has the inalienable right to feel financially free. And that person might make $10,000 a month or they might make $100,000 a month. And it isn't a number. Financial freedom is not a number. It is a mindset. And I know people that are happy and financially free making $10,000 a month. And I know people who are happy and financially free that are making $5,000 a month. And I know people making $100,000 a month that are not financially free and they are not secure, and they're not safe, and they're making in excess of a million dollars a year. So it isn't a number. It isn't a number. It is a mindset. It is a, it is a way to live your life. You mentioned uh, before we got on to the live part of this podcast that you have a couple of uh, tools to be able to help people start seeing in that direction. Do you want to tell us about those? Well, My website is smashingnumbers.com, and there are several things there. There is a download for 25 tips that you can use to give you some guidelines on what your records need to look like, what you need to have. And then I have a webinar that you can watch on demand. It's about 30 minutes that is a good starting off point. Um, If you want to have a talk with me, I'm more than happy to do that. There is a link for a free consultation. You can set up a time and we can have a conversation about where you are and where you want to be and what that looks like. Um, I also have an online course that I offer. So there's lots of ways. And one of the most common things I hear is I'm not ready or I can't afford it and I'm trying to not spend any money. And entrepreneurs, service-based entrepreneurs are the only people on the planet that think they can go into business without making any investment. If you're going to open a restaurant, you have to buy tables and chairs and dishes 
and hire employees and print menus. Think of all the money you have to spend before you ever serve a meal, okay? And they have to have that foundation. And every business needs that. And so if you take the time to build the foundation strong up front, and it's never too late to do that. You can always come in and patch the foundation, okay? But but if you get the foundation right, then you've got some place to go with your business. And that, I think, is a beautiful thing. Be ready. Do it scared. Yeah. Be willing to look at those numbers. and Be yeah. willing to say, okay, Maddie, tell me what I'm not seeing. Tell me what I don't know so I can do it right. Because the future side of it is where that will materialize the change in mindset and the change in direction, the change in planning. It's never too late. It's never too late. Because where things can, can t- things can change on a dime. You know, yes. you know, you know, think about it, it, there's a myriad of ways that things can change in a matter of seconds. And what you decide to do differently forms the rest of your life. All of that is probably not something you hear from very many CPAs. No, actually, (laughs) that's why I absolutely love this conversation with you because it is difficult in that industry. You know, it it has become so much of a just a tax preparation industry and less about, you know, the the business health of the business, the financial aspect of the business. Um, Decades ago, you would have town accountants, town CPAs that, you know, the farmers or the service-based industry businesses would go and and ask advice, but with the tax code increasing and with the IRS regulations, you know, going, going from here to infinity at this point, it became less about the conversation and more about just the preparation. And that's where it got lost. Well, you know, we work with clients all over the United States virtually. And I spend most of my day on Zoom talking to people. And I love working with people who are making a difference in the world and helping them get paid for what they're doing, which is absolutely nothing wrong with. Everybody, you know, there, there's sometimes, sometimes people are reluctant to charge what they're worth and they need someone to tell them to say, you know, Let's step this up. And, um, you know, the, the CPA profession has dism- is dismal when it comes to their support of those entrepreneurs because they come in in March and April and get their taxes done, and that's it. And my, my little soapbox, my little corner of the world is directed at trying to make those people be conscious in their decision making so that they can have more. You are a breath of fresh air in an industry that needs it and in the businesses that may not realize they need you yet. And we do do bookkeeping and taxes. (laughs) Of course, I would expect nothing less, but with the utmost integrity and with your capacity to guide them as well. Absolutely. Maddie, tell the listeners where they can find you and connect with you directly. They can contact smashingnumbers.com and there is a link for a consultation. There's a phone number there. They can call me. You can email me at maddie at smashingnumbers.com. Be sure and tell me where you came from, where you heard what, where you heard about us. And um, our office is physically located in Northwest Iowa in a town of population about 3,000 and you know, 75% of our business is small service-based businesses that are making a difference in the world. And, and we work with clients from LA to New York. And so we, we're, we're blessed with a really great group of people that are doing some pretty spectacular things in the world. What a wonderful part to be included in. I want to thank you for coming on today, Maddie. I, I really appreciate your, again, refreshing perspective in an industry that needs you and needs what you offer and your strength and your capacity to see and help make a difference. It's been my pleasure to interview you today. 
Guys, make sure that you definitely check out the show notes, link back to Maddie, have a conversation and do it even if you don't think you need it because there's going to be perspective and guidance and advice that you didn't know you needed that's going to help you and your business and your mission and your passion to drive it forward. But as always, keep moving forward. Hey, Fem Nation, I know you are called to lead something great. Are you wondering what the next best step is for you? I have a next best step. I invite you to walk with me through the Become Unstoppable Challenge. Join me on a 21-day journey to discover your inner leader. Find how to build your confident leading foundation to decide and move forward to your highest potential in business and life. After helping dozens of challengers take hold of their leadership, you will come away from this experience with a renewed sense of confidence in order to serve those who need to hear from you. As a valued listener, I'm inviting you to save 25% on the next 21 day challenge by using code FEM2020. That's F E M 2020. Check it out at www.becomeunstoppablechallenge.com. Again, That's www.becomeunstoppablechallenge.com. Coupon code FEM2020. I look forward to seeing you on the inside.